Hey guys, this box just showed up in the post today, so I thought I'd take some time and do a video while I open it up, because I'm not sure exactly what's inside. I mean, I have some sense of what's inside, because I bid on this on eBay and won it, and I wouldn't have bid if I didn't know what I was getting, but uh, the pictures only showed so much. What it is, is a bunch of vintage TV parts, I believe. And more or less new old stock. Um, as I recall, there were some yokes and maybe a flyback or two and various other coils and uh, some controls, potentiometers, switches, and whatnot. Oh, this could be interesting. Exact replacement portable TV antenna. This might actually go right onto the Motorola set that I just finished working on. Oh, no, not quite. Hmm. Alright, well this would be for a TV that had a uh, built-in antenna like the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Town & Country set. You know what though, there was a clever guy on the antique radio forum that took some brass antennas like this and broke them apart and was able to make pretty darn good looking replicas for Predicta antennas. So this might be a very good candidate for that because the original Predictas were brass and they do, and actually, boy they do look a lot like this. Huh. All right. Well, that coming very handy because I do need two or three of them for some of my sets. All right. What else have we got? Oh, another antenna, totally different type. This one's chrome, only a single section. Probably also make a decent predicted antenna though. Boy, there's a lot of stuff in there. Alright, there's one yoke for a 90 degree deflection CRT. Unused, looks to be in good condition. Let's see. A couple of tube sockets. I think these would be for high voltage rectifiers or some such. Not entirely sure. And you got a whole bunch of picture tube brighteners. It'd be cool if one of these is an isolation or has an option to be an isolation transformer. Because some of these have various options, like this says for series or parallel. And some of these are also isolation transformers. The reason that's handy is I have at least one picture tube that has a cathode to heater short. And if you use an isolation transformer on it, you can still use it. Right. Hey, if nothing else, I like the graphics on these. Pretty nifty, I think. View bright, power. Right. This. Uh, genuine Filco deflection yoke and cable. Not sure what set this would go with. Might be for a predicted, but I'm not sure. Got the part number on here though, so it'll be easy enough to look up. Let's see. Well, up a transformer. A whole bunch of various Thord Arson replacement coils, ringing coil, horizontal stink, state, stink stabilizer, universal vertical output transformer. Sure, that'll come in handy someday. Uh, 
audio output transformer. Westinghouse something. Wow. That's probably from a tuner. And all these little adjustable slug thingies. Hopefully I will never need that because I do not want to have to ever rebuild a tuner. And a little trimmer control. What I'm really hoping to find in, in and amongst this stuff are some thermistors and maybe some fusistors. 6 volt vibrator or uh, battery operated radio probably the trimmer control uh, oh switch this is you get attached to this to a potentiometer and add an AC power switch to it Interesting in this bag. Say new mister. Smallest tubes made, I believe, at least for commercial applications. So that is a vacuum tube. Kind of the last hurrah of vacuum tubes. I believe in TVs they use these in the tuners, especially for the UHF circuitry. So here's a real predictor antenna. This is from one of my tandem sets. And here's these guys. So this one I suppose is closer overall to the predictor, only it's chrome instead of brass. Whereas these are closer to the brass part, but this would need quite a bit of modifying. But certainly something to uh, experiment with. So I need to fabricate a mounting plate for either one of these. But the action of the antenna and the size is pretty darn close. Here's a silicon high voltage rectifier from 1975. Oh, nice control. Push pull power switch. And a potentiometer. It's a loop stick antenna for a radio. Just a whole bunch of little coils in here. Alright, I'll keep looking through all these until there's a whole bunch of little coils in here. And I'll pick up when I find some more interesting stuff. I've got some nice J.W. Miller transformers. The famous K-Tran, the finest miniature IF transformer ever manufactured. I don't know about that, but it does look pretty nice. Got a few of these, some 455, some 262 kilohertz. These are it's a list of all the different models they had available. Pick up diagrams and so on. 
Now this bag is all Motorola replacement parts. And right on top is a tire flyback. It's rather familiar because I think I've restored one or two sets that use this. There's some that looked a lot like it. Under the chassis mount flyback. That would be the Motorola 12K2 and uh, what I call the Frankenrola, I think, which was a mismatch of cabinets and chassis. And when I got mine, I saw this goo on them and I thought that that was some serviceman's attempt to fix arcing to spread some Corona dope or some goo on there, but this looks to be a uh, factory replacement, so I guess that's how, just how they manufactured them. Module of some sort, a power resistor. Huh. Uh, and all these, I think. Well, I'm not sure what I think. Let's see. Okay, that's a transformer. Audio output, maybe vertical output, vertical oscillator. I was going to say that these might be all hybrid modules, but no. It's really nice to get some of these controls, because when you want to find something like this, on, off, volume, and then maybe contrast or brightness or something, all on one control, it's going to be a real pain to find. Of course, who's to say that I had <laughs> uh, the exact right value for a set? Um, transformer, I guess. I've got another box of uh, replacement Motorola parts that have similar boxes like this, but they're all hybrid modules. When you open them up, you find these little. I have transformer. You find these little modules that have all these resistors and capacitors and so on, kind of encased in this brown goo. But I guess that's not what's in here. Here's one of those Motorola modules I was talking about. Weird 3D structure of components that's sealed in this rust red coating with a bunch of leads coming out. Also found this Motorola part. I have no idea what this is other than this clue here. Point arrow at rear of tone arm. There's a little clicky thing here, and there's a cylinder that spins around. I bet one of you knows what this is. So I'll have to catalog all this stuff, make up a little database, because if I ever do need any of these parts, it's very hard to locate. I can't dig through all these parts every time. Uh, these are a whole bunch of Merrick parts. Uh, very heavy. Probably more transformers, you know, vertical blocking oscillator. AM radio oscillator coil. For a transformer and so on. Spray components. Oh, twist lock electrolytics. I wouldn't expect any of these to still be good, but if I ever find a set that's got some caps that are missing and I want to restuff these, I suppose I could reuse them. These Clarostat IRC, they should be all controls. Two meg pot, five meg pot, and so on. Just 
pop one open to see what they look like. Kind of a ladder style, they're more like for PC board mount where they have little tabs instead of solder lugs. Here's what appears to be an ancient wall wart. 6 volts DC, 200 milliamps. Plug this right into the wall. And it's got a noise cap on right on the AC line. It's got a rectifier down in there, a little electrolytic, and then this plug on the other end. And finally I found a couple of these little baby 2 inch 8 ohm impedance permanent magnet speakers. So no thermistors, no fusistors, and I looked up that Philco yoke and it is not for a Predicta. But all in all, not a bad haul. I hope you enjoyed this look at a box full of random vintage TV parts.